to the streets, 1970s New York, where the Bronx ghetto kids have been left to fend for themselves. In late 60s, early 70s, there was a lot of gangs, Black Spades, Savage Skulls, the Nomads, the Reapers, you know what I'm saying? All of these gangs came out and, you know, just to rumble. The Casanovas, the Savage Nomads, the gangs made life hell. I got into street gangs, the Black Spades, a lot of other groups I was in. Africa Bambata was a former gang member who was determined to reverse the prevalent gang culture of 70s New York. He formed the Zulu Nation a peaceful alternative gang. His observation was that young black and Latino people in inner cities, particularly in the Bronx at that time, needed a vehicle that was gonna interrupt the cycle of death and destruction that was ravaging our communities. He understood that he could create this group of people not dissimilar to a gang, but their motivation was music. So instead of now, you know what I'm saying, cats coming in rumble, you got two opposing groups and they used to battle it out on the dance floor. It's the Bronx in the house! It's everybody in the house! Realizing its potential for revolution, Bambata took what he saw at Cool Herc's parties and turned it into a philosophy by outlining the five elements of hip-hop. DJing, MCing, graffiti art, breakdancing, and knowledge. Knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. That's the fifth element that sometimes we forget about, but really is supposed to be kind of the foundational element for hip hop. Suddenly, the man with the records became cooler than the man with the knife, and hip hop as a true culture was born. I don't care what anyone says, he's the, he's the forefather. He's the light, you know? Two and a half decades after Bombata defined hip hop culture, we could have been forgiven for thinking we understood what hip hop was all about. But then, this happened.